Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to Scolio Strong. My name is Reed Brilia and uh, coming at you today um, on the uh, topic of uh, how to optimize your position of the spine uh, when you're doing a hip hinge. Okay, and uh, ultimately what we uh, have talked about so far is you really want to learn how to uh, stabilize the muscles of the, of the rib cage, the trunk, and the torso to allow some movement to occur at the hips rather than flexing and extending through the spine. Uh, so one phenomenal way that works great uh, with uh, patients uh, that's a pretty introductory um, uh, exercise is a floor slide. So what I want you to do, I want you to go ahead, lie down on a yoga mat or on the floor, have your knees bent up, uh, feet flat, and your hands um, want to kind of start to be in kind of like this W position. Now if you feel right in this position here that your ribs are flared up, you have a lot of space between your low back. Right? And when you let your palms fall out to the sides, you really feel just everything kind of exacerbate and just extend. All right, This is what happens uh, during uh, sometimes when you're squatting and, and you really have a tough time trying to learn how to, to keep these ribs down, engage the muscles of the torso, and, and really stabilize and allow those hips and those glutes to really uh, kind of maximize the effort that they're putting out. So what I want you to try to do with this, this exercise here, have your elbows up. Uh, right at 90 degrees, okay? I want you to try to rock the pelvis and find that neutral position, right? So we're rocking forward as far as possible, backward as far as possible, right? And then we're kind of coming to that middle ground there, all right? And you might feel a little bit of space um, between the low back, but it might lessen just from doing that. Now, what I want you to try and do is you're going to try and bring your rib cage down, and this is going to help get that elongation uh, that you're really looking for. Uh, uh, you know, ultimately, which is the foundational movement of when you have scoliosis. So what do you want to do to bring those ribs down? You want to keep that pelvis stable, okay, stay steady. You want to try to put your fingers right on the outside of your torso, and you want to act, try and push your muscles into your fingers, right? So a lot of times when uh, you hear uh, coaches or trainers say ribs down, ribs down, They'll, they'll try and do so through your rectus abdominis. And that's a really large muscle, but it's really not meant to um, bring those ribs down. That, that's more meant to uh, perform movements of flexion and extension. So what we want to do is we want to try to push the muscles of our obliques out into our fingers, okay, which will ultimately bring those ribs down. So you want to have a soft belly when you do this and a really tight obliques, like you can't even push in. All right, and that might even take a little bit of practice. Sometimes it helps taking a deep breath in. And on the exhale, pushing out even more. And with that, I haven't moved my pelvis, but now I really can't get any space under my low back. All right, and from this position, you'll feel like you can maybe get your elbows up a little higher, okay, and even rocking back. Now, when you rock back, your palms to the floor, you want to try and work hard to keep the trunk muscles engaged so you don't come back into that flare. So what you can do, take a deep breath in, Breathe out, and on the exhale, you want to try to keep as much tension as possible. Again, excellent. You might feel that your right shoulder is a little bit more limited than the left. This is more common when you have a, a more of a right side of thoracic prominence. And in this case, what you want to do is you can grab a yoga block. Okay, you can put it right up here. And that's going to block a little bit of movement. And the more range of motion that you get over time, okay, you can go down. But you want to actively engage the shoulder muscles when you do this exercise. So take another deep breath in. Stable pelvis, ribs down. Using your obliques on the exhale. And if you don't want to go to the floor, but when you hit the block, keep pushing into the block. And when you do this, again, you're fighting the resistance to come into an extended position. Ribs down, deep breath in, firing the obliques, pushing down the back of the palms into the ground. And you'll feel a lot of tension back in that area. And over time, you might feel get a little bit easier where you can push the block away. Now I don't have as much resistance. 
once you can actually assume this position, then on the next inhale, push your arms up. With the exhale, try and go up a little further on the next exhale. Again, your obliques are firing and not the rectus, not the six pack on the back. Okay? So then you can get more of a dynamic movement once you have that stable rib cage, stable trunk, and stable pelvis position maintained. Take a deep breath in. On the exhale, arms go up, back stays flat. And what you might find, you go right into a hip hinge pattern after this, and you see if you can maintain that, that, that rib down position, utilizing more of those obliques rather than those rectus to try and keep those ribs down. And that way, you're really elongating your lumbar spine, keeping your pelvis stable, and really optimizing the way that your muscles of your trunk are functioning so you can lift heavier weight and ultimately bend down, stoop down, pick up your children, um, with uh, the knowledge and the, the feeling of a more confident and resilient spine. Thank you very much. Tune in next time.